Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number five from the June 2024 um, replacement paper for Pure Mathematics P1 from the Edexcel International A Level exam. And here we're first asked to fully factorize this cubic expression. Now, this is a, a type of expression which we normally aren't able to factorize in P1. We learn how to do that in P2. But because this is a cubic which doesn't have a constant term, it just has um, all of the terms that involve x, we can factorize this quite easily. We can take out x as a common factor, and then we're left with a quadratic 9x squared minus 10x plus 1. Okay, and then we can try to factorize this. Now, um, in order to factorize this, we could, I mean, in this case, you can check to see is it a perfect square because the first term is a perfect square and the last term is a perfect square. So if we were to factorize this, um, it, it's possible it could be 3x uh, minus 1 squared. But unfortunately, this doesn't work. Why? Because the middle term in this case, the first term would be 9x squared. That's good. The last term would be plus 1, which is fine. But the middle term would be 2 times 3x times minus 1. Okay, so you'll end up with 9x squared minus 6x plus 1, which is not the same as this. So that doesn't work. But that's always a good good idea in your mind to see. If you see a perfect square in the first and the last term, and it's a positive last term, it can't be negative, of course, because it can't be a perfect square then, then um, you can always check to see. If you, if you take the square root of this, which is 3x, square root of this, which is 1, you multiply them together and double it. Does it give you that? If it doesn't, then there's something uh, not right. That means it's not a perfect square. So we have to think about how to factorize this in other ways. Okay, now, a lot of you would just go straight for your calculator and do the, the shortcut way of, you know, factorizing by just putting the values of A, B, and C in. But I want you to know how to do this in a proper way. All right, so 9x squared and plus 1. Two numbers multiplied together to give you 9x squared. And when you add them together, you have to get negative 10, negative 10x. So um, it looks like it's minus 9x and um, minus 1x. The sum is negative 10x and the product is 9x squared. It's very simple. So here the common factor is 9x. 9x times x is 9x squared. 9x times minus 1 is minus 1. And x times minus 1 is also minus 1. So we're left with x times 9x minus 1 times x minus 1. So this, when you when you factor it, when you expand it, 9x squared minus 9x minus x, that's minus 10x plus 1. Okay, so there we have our answer. Pretty straightforward. So there's the answer to part A. Now for part B, it says hence. What does hence mean? Well, hence means using what you have just worked out. Solve this equation. Okay, so what we can see here, hence, whenever you see hence, always look at what you were given. And what we're given is something that looks like this, and you compare it to what we have here. So if you compare, we have we have 9 times something, and that's like x cubed, minus 10 times something, which is that's x squared, and that's like that, plus something. So we can see here that if we consider x to be the same as 3 to the power of y, then if you square x, you're going to get 3 to the power of y all squared, which is the same as 3 squared, like 3 squared to the power of y, which is going to be 9 to the power of y. Okay, and x cubed would be, you know, um, 3 to the power of y all cubed, which is the same as 27 to the power of y. Right? Now, if we take this form of them, like x squared equals 3 to the power of y squared, we can swap these two around and say this is the same as, in fact, we don't need to, to, to worry. We can, we, can, we can see here that if we let x equals 3 to the power of y, okay, if this is cubed here. So if we let x equals 3 to the power of y, we can replace the, the 3 to the power of y with x. And if we let 9 to the power of y be the same as 3y squared, we can replace that with x squared. So this is minus 10 times x squared. And we can see that 27 to the power of y can be expressed as 
x cubed. So this is 9 times x cubed. So we have 9x cubed minus 10x squared plus x equals 0. And we already factorized this as x times 9x minus 1 times x minus 1 equals 0. We've just factorized that there. And that's where the hence comes in. So now we can say either x equals 0 or 9x equals 1 or x equals 1. So x equals 1 over 9 and x equals 1. Now when we solve an equation here, we're solving this. And we have to give the answer in terms of y. We have it in terms of x here. So we can say, okay, we know that x is the same as 3 to the power of y. So here we can say 3 to the power of y is equal to 1 over 9. And here we can say 3 to the power of y is equal to 0. And here 3 to the power of y is equal to 1. Now we know that there's no solution to this. 3 to the power of y cannot equal 0. Okay, because that's the asymptote for this. If you were to draw a graph of 3 to the power of something like this, it's going to never hit this never equals zero and three to the power of y equals one one over nine but we can solve this exponential using exponential equations we can write this as three to the power of y equals one over three squared and we know that three squared is the same as three to the power of minus two so three to the power of y equals three to the power of minus two in which case y is equal to negative two so when you're solving an exponential equation you should always try to make the bases the same so three and nine you can see that they can be expressed both as 3 squared, or 3 to the power of something. So this is 3, and this is 3 to the power of 2. And we know the laws of indices, that 1 over a to the power of m is the same as a to the power of negative m. And went funny there, sorry. Okay, so that's one of the laws that we learned from indices. So in, that can be 3 to the power of minus 2. And now once the, once the bases are the same, 3 to the power of y, is the same thing as 3 to the power of minus 2, then y must be minus 2. So that's one of our solutions. And here we know that 3 to the power of y equals 1. Of course, we know anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. You can think of it as you want, as express 1 as 3 to the power of something. Well, 1 is 3 to the power of 0. And if the bases are the same, the powers must be the same. So y is equal to 0. Now let's have a look um, at the question here. It doesn't give us any... any um, Limitations, no, so y can be zero. So those are the two solutions, okay, um, to this equation. And that, I think, is five completed. Yep, question five. So a few short five questions here. So question number five is now also completed for this June 2024 R paper from Pure Mathematics. One, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist on the top right of the screen at the end of this video. Other questions from the topic of... Um, I guess factorizing and also indices you can find in the playlist in these two places here and you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on the link at the top. Thank you for watching and see you soon.